Hey guys, welcome to a brand new series. This is F1 2018, the official video game. I'm Joe, if you're new around here, or Captain Goodspeed, and we will be doing a full career mode on this game. In previous years, I've done McLaren and Renault, uh, and this year, we're going to go up in the world somewhat. So make sure you do subscribe for regular F1 content. We just have to do the stupid license agreements and stuff like that uh, before... Getting into the career mode, um, which would be good. Just, just sort of move this uh, around a little bit to, to fit my screen, which is great. And now we've got the driver creation. So the, the, hopefully a few more avatars than there were last year on this game. It certainly looks as if there is. I might be wrong, um, but none of them really look like me, which is what you'd expect. Uh, oh dear, dearie me. Let's go for this guy. I'm sure you can change it at some point anyway. Uh, we'll go for, for a helmet. Uh, maybe one of the designs, actually. That, that one it. Uh, quite like that one. But the helmet is certainly something you can change within the career mode. Uh, ooh. Quite like that one. Let's go for it. Let's go for that one. And then we'll keep the colours on that for, for now. And then maybe between episodes... That'll be something that I change. Uh, driver number, I would go for eight, but unfortunately that's already took uh, or taken by a driver. Um, that's 97, which is my year of birth. We'll go for 22, again like last year. We'll keep the consistency going. Unfortunately, it doesn't remember your details from last year and the way old F1 games used to. But uh, no, I'm really, really looking forward to this and we're going to be with Mercedes in this career mode, uh, simply because I feel like we've only completed one season in uh, in in the the games previous to this, so I think we've we've worked up our chance to uh, to, to get into the the top tier teams, if you like. Uh, we've won races on the games, and uh, and now is our chance to go for a championship. Do, will they have Joe? I've got Joker. Joker. <laughs> um, oh, we might have to go for Hanson. 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 It's probably the closest we're going to get to. Unless we go for one of the... I wonder if they've got Shoe as a... No, they don't. <laughs> oh, this is so annoying. But, um, yeah, this is a, a new feature this year. The audio name. So, David Croft will... Uh, read it out. We'll go for Hansen, why not? Register details, and there we go. So, we'll go straight into the career mode. Team selection, obviously any team is available once again, but this year there's uh, different uh, things within it. Um, you know, so it's different R&D trees for each team. But you can see the performance comparison on the right-hand side. Ferrari and, and Mercedes, very similar as they are in real life. Red Bull, Slightly behind them. Renault, the fourth team ahead of Haas. That's fairly interesting. McLaren, only just behind Haas. I'm not entirely sure that's true. Uh, F Force India, or will they be called Force India by the time this video comes out? Who knows? A lot of uh, stuff going on with, with uh, their team right now. We've got Torosso, Sauber, and Williams uh, at the back. Williams should be further away from Sauber than they are there. But we are going to go for Mercedes this year. And uh, our teammate is going to be the one, the only, Lewis Hamilton, four-time world champion. And this is certainly going to be interesting. Uh, we're going to put the formation lap on. Uh, we don't want the, the AI on easy. I think I had them on about 95 last year. So we'll start it off on 90. I haven't played uh, Formula 1 for a long time. So um, I guess we go for the softer allocations. Or do we go for more super soft tyres in the race? Possibly. Um, race settings, flashbacks. I'll keep them on for now, but I usually would turn them off. Vehicle damage simulation. And we'll have safety cars on as well. Corner cutting. Um, regular. Uh, race starts. Manual. And the assists. Uh, we'll go for professional, even though that's not true. Anti-locks, brakes off, traction control on full, 
uh, and that on corners only on 2D, uh, a, a, an automatic gearbox, pit assist, pit release assist, uh, an ERS mode I guess we'll have on, on manual for now. And uh, yeah, we'll just get straight into it. This is going to be really, really interesting and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Um, I, I will sort of be cutting about this first episode. Um, uh, I'll, I'll maybe uh, sort of check in with you guys at the end of each session and show you any thing interesting but uh we'll just get to the main career mode menu just in case there's any cutscenes or whatever that we have to go through thanks for coming by i'm sure you're very anxious to get out on track it's taken a lot of effort to get to f1 congratulations but the real work starts now. This is... Claire, motorsports journalist. Nice to meet you. You'll be seeing quite a lot of me throughout the season. So, you had a pretty impressive junior career. How are you feeling about your move into F1? Do you think you have what it takes? Let's save the questions for a proper interview, shall we? I'm sure you'll have a lot more to talk about once there's been some action on track. I think we could fit you in after FP1 if you're free. That works for me. I'll grab you the second you finish on the track. Remember, the relationship you have with the team can be affected by what you say to the media. So be careful. Anyway, it's time to catch up with Carl. He's waiting for you in the data centre. Good luck out there today. So there's one of the other new features of this year's game. The media are back. Welcome to the data centre. Here, we've got access to all kinds of information, including car telemetry, weather, lap times, tyre wear, the list goes on. Plus, we've got a direct link back to the factory. So we're in constant communication with the team there. We need you to regularly feedback about areas of the car that are lacking and help us direct our resources in the most productive way. More effort here equals a quicker car, so it's well worth the effort. Good luck this season. Oh, and make us all look good, okay? So there we have it. Uh, this is now the R&D. We can see Lewis Hamilton coming and taking Why his seat ahead of us. As you're well aware, Mercedes have been mighty over the past few years. So there's going to be a lot expected of you right from the start. A little message from Emma. You know, it's team specific. Little immersive bits like that. One thing I will say as a first impression, it feels very scripted. Um, yeah, it doesn't feel very natural from the the reports and stuff, which is, of course, what is going to happen because, um, obviously, they can't be expected to. Um, oh, we can go into the workstation. Okay, um, they can't be expected just reel off Here lines and lines. But details about your current contract. On one side are the objectives and bonuses that we've negotiated with the team. On the other. It's information regarding how you're perceived throughout the paddock, your reputation with the current team, and your overall value to them, which is a combination of these elements. Okay, so this is something that's new, the contracts idea. More detailed contracts. So you can say expected quality position fourth, expected race fourth. I'm not entirely sure that that's totally expected, but maybe at the start of my career, um, in theory, uh, then that's, that's what's going to happen. Obviously... Um, uh, uh, this game doesn't detect my previous career modes, which is good, you know, if you want to do a full career mode. Um, and, and hopefully we will do 10 seasons, but I just don't see it happening. So that's why we're sticking with Mercedes to start off with. We'll have a championship battle and then we'll take it from there. Uh, team order, second driver. I wonder if there's going to be any sort of team orders in this game. I haven't heard anything about that yet. Uh, the team goal qualifies sixth or better and you get a 400 resource points boost from that, which is really, really good in my opinion. Contract perks. We haven't got any of them yet. I'm sure we'll see them throughout the career mode. Um, Winning rivalries is a great way to earn respect from your team and around the paddock, which will help make it easier to negotiate favourable contracts. Your first rival is always your teammate, but you can choose who to declare as your second. The harder the rival from the eligible selection, the more respect you stand to gain or lose, depending on the result. So that's rivalries. That's something that we'll we'll have a look at later in the, the, the career mode. Uh, there's our personal details. It looks like you can't go through the, the seasons. Um... Oh no, you can actually, and and see what results you got. Although that's our that's R and D stuff, so yeah. But uh, the the R and D tree, as you can see, some of it is greyed out. 
um, simply because uh, it, it's unrealistic to know all of the possible developments you can make at the start. So as we go through, we'll see thing potential routes uh, expand, and and uh, obviously for Mercedes, I don't know which uh, which parts um, are worth. Maybe the aerodynamics, I don't know. Obviously their powertrain is very strong, their chassis. It's very strong as well. Perhaps chassis and aerodynamics are the ones that can improve more than their engine, if you like. So that that's uh, what we maybe I will do. Go for something like this. He's he's talking. Um, I I don't know what's happened to to the other Chris, the the boring man. But uh, and here we go as well. Here's the the certain parts which we had last year. We can only have two of, of certain uh, engine parts and three of others. Um, and obviously still, I think, um, five gearboxes, I'm pretty sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can't change them until you've done six races or whatever anyway. So, that's all very interesting. I'm going to go into the, the practice sessions. There, there is a few emails here that we could... Um, we could read through, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure you guys just want to get into some action, so I will be back with you at the end of FP1. Alright guys, we're coming towards the end of FP1, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you the, the new sort of um, screen layout. As you can see, when we're sat in, in the garage, just in like in real life, we've got the two screens and um, a, a new practice session this year, the ERS management. I found it quite easy, to be honest. You just put it on low management and, and make sure your pace is good enough. Um, uh, looking at the, the time and screen, if, if we can, for a second. We're down in fifth at the minute. It's it's not too much of an issue. We're three tenths off Lewis. I haven't really put in a, a clean lap yet, but uh, hopefully our pace will improve throughout the weekend. Uh, the setup screen has not changed. You might not be surprised to hear. Um, as you can see, it's just a, a 1 to 11 scale, as it is every year. Um, and, and nothing really changed there. We've still got the TV screen and uh, and everything else is pretty much the same. Oh, Verstappen, Vettel and Lewis Hamilton. Thank you for joining us for free practice today. We'll be back with more Formula One action very shortly. So that was uh, FP1, uh, Verstappen quickest in that session. You can see some of the relative pace. Hartley actually the slowest on the grid according to... Uh, FP1, but uh, it'll be very interesting to see what happens after this. Obviously, we've got this interview coming up. Apparently, uh, she she said at the end of FP1. Nice. So here we go. You, enjoy that. you made it look easy. It's been a lot of hard work, but here you are making your debut in Formula One. You must be thrilled. Let's go for the top option. So, how are you finding things at the team? Are you settling in? Let's go into that. that I, I, you don't get a lot of time to read the options. Are you just aiming um, to find your feet in Formula One, or do you see something more? I'll be on track with the best. There, yeah, let's go for that. Sportsmanship increased, apparently. Great. Well, that's everything. So I don't know what the team actually want. I forgot to look at that in our contract. But uh, we're, we've went off to the, the Weirbridge now. It uh, didn't seem that optimised, to be honest with you. The, uh, the the whole interview process, hopefully that's something that will be patched. It will be a lot smoother in the future. Maybe giving you a few more seconds to answer as well. But here we go. This is the end of session report. A lot cleaner, a lot nicer to look at. Um, and we have uh, got quite a few resource points from that. Um, hopefully our standard has gone up with Mercedes. Uh, it has done with Ferrari, Williams, Force India. Pretty much everybody is very happy with the way that I was uh, saying. Um, uh, with what I was saying in the, the interview. Uh, apparently Mercedes prefer uh, sportsmanship, so you know we're we're gonna try and and be somewhere in the middle. I think that's the best thing. Um, and we are currently 
uh, a rookie in terms of respect level. But that is pretty much that for FP1. I, I guess the next time I'll see you will be at the end of qualifying. Um, I might record uh, the quali qualifying three. I'm assuming we'll get through Q3. Uh, I'll record qualifying three and, and keep the best bits for you guys um, for the actual video. So I'll see you in FP... Um, no, not FP3. In Q3. Fingers crossed we don't go out before then. Welcome to Melbourne, where qualifying for the Australian Grand Prix should be getting underway shortly. And as we wait, poised for the start of what will hopefully be a thrilling qualifying, why don't you tell us, Anthony Davidson, about the things you can do to really get the most out of a car in a session like this? Well, you're largely limited by the Parc Ferme regulations, of course. Back in the old days, pre-2004, you'd work on both a qualifying setup and a race setup over practice, and then swap them over after qualifying. So the race car was quite different at times to the qualifying car. Nowadays, though, you have to find a compromise that works for both. There are a few things that you can still adjust during the session, such as the differential, the brake bias, and the front wing angle, but that's about it. So it's more about optimizing what you do have and adapting your own style to suit the track conditions. So here we are in Q3 then. It's been a fairly comfortable route through the qualifying sessions and we did qualify on the super soft tyres in Q2. So they are the tyres we will be starting on in tomorrow's race. It'll be interesting to see what happens in this session, how close we'll be to Lewis Hamilton um, and you know the Ferraris as well. Can we go for pole position in our first race for Mercedes? Let's find out. So here we come round the final turn of our first meaningful lap on F1 2018. What's it going to be? It's well off the pace, a 125.1. A few little mistakes on that lap, but that isn't even going to be good enough for top five. So we're definitely going to have to improve on our second lap of this session. So here we go, it is crunch time, only 20 seconds left in the session. We are hopefully going to be the last car over the line. Uh, I think Vettel's done a 123.3, so that is the target as we go into this final lap. We are on maximum car settings, maximum ERS settings as well to try and force ourselves through this lap. A very poor start, it has to be said, a little bit wide into turn one. And maybe we have to go for, you know, starting on the second row rather than pole position. Maybe just hold back in the car a little bit. I don't know. But this is going to be completely live. Our Q3 lap, it is purple in the first sector. Amazingly, considering we made those mistakes. But we're 1.2 seconds up at the moment. I don't know where this time has come from. We've probably just lost it all there. Although I haven't said that, we are still going up here. Yeah, what, what's it going to be in Sector 2? Only green. But who cares? We're a, we're a tenth off Sebastian Vettel's time at the moment. If we can finish there, that'll surely be second. And maybe the AI difficulty will have to go up a little bit. But uh, this is all just experimentation in this first race. We're coming round in towards the final couple of turns this is the big test a little lock up on the inside left there and we're now coming up to the finishing line drs is activated we are just keeping it straight up until the line where do we finish p2 i think it is p2 second place that is really really good considering there was a couple of little mistakes on that lap what a lap we've pulled out there and well four t or three tenths quicker than Lewis Hamilton in that session um, really really happy with that splitting the Ferraris who seem to have our number uh, over the over uh, certainly Hamilton but uh, no a couple of tenths ahead of Reitman four tenths ahead of our teammate Lewis Hamilton in our first qualifying session that is terrific hopefully We'll get some sort of press interview uh, to come afterwards, and then we'll get straight into the race, which will be a live com as well, but I will edit down the highlights. But hopefully you enjoyed that last lap there. That was 
pretty on the edge of what the car can do. A couple of little mistakes, obviously. But, uh, well, we didn't set the fastest lap to Lewis Hamilton. Apparently, he set a faster lap in a previous session. So that's very interesting that he just didn't get it together in Q3. Apparently, we are losing the rivalry there. But a few resource points um, and obviously our reputation going up a little bit with Mercedes. Um, and the, there was no such um, interview, unfortunately. But I'll hand over to David Croft and Anthony Davidson who will take you through the Australian Grand Prix. Enjoy. New drivers, new cars and a new Formula One season. But it's the same Albert Park that we've come to know and love for more than two decades now that hosts the first round of a 21 race championship, taking us from here in Melbourne, Australia, across the globe before we eventually reach the season finale at the Yas Marina circuit in Abu Dhabi. Just south of Melbourne's downtown business centre is the one and only Albert Park circuit. 3.3 miles of public roads, closed for the weekend of course, make for a bumpy circuit with little undulation. There are 16 corners around the lake and a couple of good passing opportunities here as well. Thanks in part to the DRS zone into turns 1, 3 and 13. We have plenty of changes to the sport this year with the addition of new safety features, the return of France and Germany in an expanded 21 race calendar and more tyre compounds than ever before. And of course we have some big car manufacturers back in the sport too, with Alfa Romeo and Aston Martin returning as title sponsors for Sauber and Red Bull respectively. Joining me to take you through all the action of the 2018 Formula 1 season is Anthony Davidson. Great to have you with us. Thanks Crofty, always happy to be here. I'm looking forward to getting underway. Last year was Mercedes' fourth constructors title in a row, although for the first half of the season, it was absolutely neck and neck with the Ferraris. Hopefully this year we can see the chase in pack take that final step, as I'd love to see a championship contest all the way up to the final race in Abu Dhabi. Another story to keep an eye on is the relative performance of McLaren and Toro Rosso, who have exchanged power unit suppliers this year. And given the additional restrictions on engine components, they need to be strong in terms of both performance and reliability. Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position, and Hansen completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Raikkonen, Hamilton, Max Verstappen and Magnussen, Grosjean, Alonso, Van Dorn and Sergio Perez, Ricardo, Hülkenberg, Brendan Hartley and Gasly, Ocon, Sainz, Charles Leclerc and Sergei Sorokin, Ericsson and Lance Stroll rounds off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Well guys, that was amazing. The music playing in the background definitely um, sort of get me in the mood to play some F1 2018. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that as well. Certainly David Croft's commentary has improved on the game this year. Can't say the same about Anthony Davidson though. Very, very bland indeed. Why not Ben Edwards and David Coulthard? That's what we've got to ask. Here's uh, the race strategy information. It looks like a one-stop today. Obviously, we're starting on the super soft tyres. I don't know um, what Vettel is doing, so that'll be interesting. Um, whether we're on different strategies. This is the setup that I have gone for. Feel free to use it yourself. Most of it is just stock. I've, uh, I've just changed the, the wing um, a little bit but uh, no I am really really excited hopefully you guys are too it is time for F1 2018 first of all we'll have the formation lap um, so we are away uh, and Vettel is in fact on the ultra soft so we are on different strategies I think this should be turned down all the way to the lowest settings for this uh, formation lap and then we'll, we'll move everything up as we go into the race but qualifying second on our Mercedes debut is definitely uh, something I'm, I'm happy with 
uh, and you can see all them coloured dots in the left hand corner, I don't know if I've mentioned it so far in the video but it's something I'm really really impressed with actually so you can see where the respective cars are and, and you know you don't just have to guess a, a white dot um, and or look behind you uh, either which is really good and it it's a throwback to F1 2006 isn't it you know uh, pretty much everyone's favorite F1 game uh, apart from F1 2010 so yeah really really looking forward to this obviously uh, formation laps and stuff might be took out in the future but I thought for the, this video we'll make it a little bit longer and, and give you guys a bit more of the, the experience but I am feeling very nervous right now we retired on our first lap in F1 2016 uh, and last year I'm pretty sure we had some sort of incident with Raikkonen at, at, at some point I can't quite remember but uh, hopefully this year we can get off to a good start uh, I'm not long to win the race today, and you know, finishing on the podium would be uh, really, really good. But um, yeah, here we go. Well, we're setting up to uh, form the grid. That's the, the phrase I'm looking for. Right then behind us, uh, with Vettel on on pole position, Lewis Hamilton in fifth. Verst uh, sorry, fourth in with Verstappen in fifth, and then the two. Has cars behind him. The two McLarens also in the top ten, and I think Perez got in the top ten as well. We're waiting for the lights, and you can hear the cars. The, the cars sound a lot better this year. I don't know whether it's because I'm using better headphones than I have done in the past, but it certainly feels a lot better. Uh, we're going to move this up to to Rich. Lights out. Away we go for F1 2018. Vettel off to a good start, so is Raikkonen and it, Hamilton as well. We're getting sandwiched into this first turn, so we are just going to take it easy. Hamilton and Raikkonen collide in the first corner. Verstappen has took us around the outside. I don't really know what to do here. I, I guess just take it easy. We're, we're being warned for a collision with Max Verstappen, although I'm not sure we did actually make contact. Verstappen goes around the outside, that which we sort of undercut to the inside. Raikkonen is still ahead of Lewis Hamilton. Vettel has absolutely bolted. We're taking it nice and cautiously on this opening lap. I don't know whether Lewis and Raikkonen have uh, damage, but Lewis also on the super soft tyres, which is very interesting to see at this early stage. So Raikkonen surely has damage. He's, he's going pretty slowly at the moment. Um, but I'm going to get rid of this. We, we are going to stick on overtake and hot lap mode. Um, or rich and hot lap mode, whatever it is, for now, um, until we sort of settle into the race, and then we'll we'll switch down the settings. But what an exciting start! Hamilton diving down the inside of turn one, hitting Raikkonen, um, and then Verstappen going around the the outside of us. But we're just trying to keep it clean uh, for now. It will be a 25% race. I just simply don't have the time to do 50% races. I'd love to. To have the time to do all of that but I, I am a full-time student so uh, in about a month I'll be going back to uni but <sighs> what a opening lap in F1 2018 that was uh, couldn't have expected any better really some wonderful racing from the AI and uh, obviously making contact as well it'll be interesting to see whether Lewis has any sort of penalty for that you know, we haven't heard anything from Jeff so far but uh, We'll just try and stick nice and close to the cars in front. Maybe try and make a move at some point, but we don't want to take Lewis out in our first race. And uh, certainly 12 championship points uh, in the first weekend would be very, very preferable. But uh, Vettel making a very good start as well. He's bolted, so you know, we might not see him for the rest of the race. But uh, no, a very good start. Okay, DRS enabled on Hamilton, who's got DRS himself over Raikkonen, so hopefully this end of the lap will be exciting for you guys. Uh, Verstappen is just behind us as well, keeping us honest. Uh, that was a bit of a grassy moment. <laughs> We're coming into the final turn. i tell you what, the curbs are lethal on this game. Oh, we went a little bit wide there. We've got the DRS again. We're going to have to go rich here. Try and hold off Verstappen. We 
I'll run out of electrical energy, unfortunately. So we can't really uh, push at this stage of the race. Uh, but we are trying to stay close to Hamilton and Reichen and up ahead, and it's certainly working so far. I didn't check what lap we're, we're pitting, actually, so we'll just have to keep a, an ear out for, for Jeff on the radio on that one. But uh, certainly is tense racing so far. You feel like one mistake will just cost so many points. When you're with a, a lower team, it's it's a little bit different because if you if you don't score points, you know, they're, they're probably going to be a bit more forgiven but we are hoping to battle for the championship this season so we definitely have to keep an eye on uh, all our parts and, and stuff like that and, uh, and make sure we don't get any damage because that's really going to cost us but uh, DRS again enabled Hamilton having a little look at Reichland but Reichland fend them off for now obviously the straight line speed of that Ferrari is uh, going to be very difficult to overcome especially around this circuit uh, but hopefully we can get a, a bit of a better exit this time maybe get a bit of a run at Hamilton we'll go up into Rich but they're pulling away I think they're using more of their ERS at this stage if we, if we can charge our uh, battery up a little bit then it'll, it'll give us a bit more at the end of the race when I think on the old res we'll be in a better place to have a go but uh, at the moment as you were right in second Hamilton third we're in fourth and Verstappen uh, right behind us in fifth oh Hamilton pits Hamilton pits so lead car is in the pit lane it's now time for us to pressure Raikkonen for Hamilton and Verstappen both in the pits at this early stage so this is very important now for us virtual surf safety car has been deployed I'm guessing Vettel's in as well because Raikkonen has took over the lead of the race Oh, but this is going to massively affect the race because now Hamilton, Vettel and uh, Verstappen will have gained an advantage from pitting under virtual safety car. Me and Raikkonen are sort of left on our own a little bit. Um, well, that, that just means we're, we're hopefully going to have a little bit of clear air to push um, in the second half of the race. Virtual safety car is ending now obviously we can't overtake until uh, the end of the safety car window and now here we go so we're gonna go rich we're gonna try and make a move on right and then before we enter the pits had a little sniff there guess we could have dive bombed him if we wanted but uh, that's somebody off the track there and it looks like a McLaren so maybe a McLaren is out of the race but uh, doesn't look like we're gonna pit yet we're gonna keep going right and then into the pit lane which gives us some clean air to push now and, uh, and now it's time for us to try and forge a bit of an uh, Bit of an advantage and maybe come out ahead of Raikkonen and Hamilton after the pit stops. An overcut is rare these days, but you never know what can happen. Remember, box this lap. Keep an eye on your distance to the speed limit line as you approach and make sure you don't speed. So we're pitting this lap, unfortunately. Uh, maybe not the best decision to stay out. Uh, this much longer than the rest of them the tires have kind of fell apart a little bit but I was just listening to our engineer uh, and, and what he thinks best so he thought pit on lap 9 was the best idea so that is what we have done oh my goodness me we nearly crashed um, but we need to we'll be doing one more stop today. damn it right I thought I pressed the pit limiter there, so I, I'm going to flash back that. I, I won't usually do this, but uh, we're not getting a five second penalty for that one. So we need to get down to 37, and we are in this time. We might as well put that down as well. Exit, exit. And we're away. 2.7 seconds is pretty damn decent. 
going to put that on high and put that on standard. But here comes Hamilton, Verstappen and Raikkonen and they have indeed uh, got a little bit of an advantage over us. So it's time now to stick our ERS up and, and hopefully use these tyres to our advantage and get back into the battle for the podium. Well, we've just set the fastest lap on 125.2 and now we're closing in on Raikkonen, Hamilton and Verstappen up ahead. You can see we've really, really closed the gap uh, and we're managing fuel and ERS for maybe a moment that we might get later on in the race. We should hopefully get Raikkonen. He's looking really, really slow. He has done all race. Virtual safety car deployed. Now that... Puts a little bit of a spanner in the works. Just need to get the, the pace down. But Carlos Sainz apparently out of the race. Which is a shame for him. I think he was running quite well. And what we need is the, VS, the VSC to end. And here it comes. Here we go, we need that to go... Oh, what? Oh, I, di I didn't know you got a, um, a penalty for that. So, flashback it is. VSC ending, we're going green. Maintain positive delta until the green flags. Green flag. And there we go, green flag. So, race back underway. Time to go after these guys up ahead. We'll let this charge for a lap and then we'll charge at them for the last three laps or so. Here we come up to the line. See, we are getting closer. Move that up just a little bit. The yellow flags are here. 3.2 seconds. 3.2 seconds you can see somebody's in the wall there that, was that signs I, re I really don't know but uh, this is going to be intense for these next three laps and see if we can do it all right guys you can see that we are caught up to right then there's a couple of laps to go here and we're going to move the ERS up and use the full capabilities of this car DRS as well and try and overtake him before the last lap of the race. Fourth place and 12 championship points would be the reward for getting past him. We might have a little opportunity here. We have a look down the inside. There's a little bit of contact. We're going to just let him back through. That was a little bit dirty from us. Got DRS. We were caught on the curbs a little bit there. That probably means there's no chance of Verstappen and Hamilton now, but we are wheel to wheel with Raikkonen. We have got DRS open, he's defending his inside. We go down the inside, and I think we're through. I think we've done it. We're through on Raikkonen. It wasn't the cleanest, but we will have a look at it on the replay. And. As you can see, we had DRS, he came to his inside, we de went down the inside there. And in fact, it was a little bit clean, we were a little bit off track. Were all four wheels over the white line, that is the question. I think they were, I think perhaps we should hand this place back. But I'm a going to. He has lost time. If he comes close enough, we'll give him it back, but if not, we'll just take the points. The stewards haven't penalised us, I guess. You know, we did go off the track and gain an advantage, but... I don't know, you guys will have to let me know down in the comments how fair was that move. Oh my goodness, we nearly went into the wall there looking at right then. But uh, it's slightly disappointing not to get onto the podium, I guess in our first race but uh, 
a good race nonetheless. I think we were, you know, maybe second best in the strategy today. And uh, just a bit of a cautious start overall has camped our race. But here we come round the final corner. We're going to finish our first Grand Prix in fourth place. Hamilton and Verstappen have crossed over the line. And I think they went uh, past each other. I think Hamilton went past them on the line there. That was crazy. But uh, we've got the music back. And I love it. A great win then for the Marinello team today. And Anthony Davidson, give me your thoughts. How did they accomplish this result? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. So, here they come now, out onto the podium. Wherever you go, anywhere in the world, the prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands and they're out in force again today. It's Ferrari on the top step once more. So there you have it. Round of the World Championship. Here's how things look in the drivers' table. Sebastian Vettel takes the lead of the drivers' championship. Now then, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? I'll probably go for Pierre Gasly. The team did a good job with the strategy to put him in amongst the pack, but it's the driver's job to capitalise on those opportunities, and he did so with a lot of skill. And now let's take a look at the constructors' standings. Ferrari moved to the top of the table. After all that excitement, it's time for a lie down, I think. Thanks for joining us and goodbye until the next race. Well, a fourth place finish in our opening Grand Prix. Uh, only a few seconds off the podium. A bit of a shame, I guess, uh, to not quite get onto uh, the champagne stand, if you like. But never mind, we got a faster slap out of it. And, you know, we had some really good racing with Raikkonen towards the end there. Did we overstep the mark in our pass perhaps you guys will have to decide that down in the comments but a uh, couple of retirements today Carlos Sainz and Fernando Alonso the two Spaniards obviously Alonso retiring at the end of this season so we'll advance and we'll see if there's any press interviews or whatever to do after the race I'm sure there will be and then we'll round off this first episode but first impressions of the game very very good indeed really really impressed but uh, there you go. And we got three points there. Hamilton got four, uh, unfortunately. So we are two points behind in the rivalry, but uh, certainly not uh, a million miles away after that first race. And I think we can be confident going forward that we can compete with Hamilton. And then we go some more resource points, which is very good. We've increased our reputation with um, with. Mercedes as as well as uh, Williams and Force India, not that we care much, but uh, it's only Ferrari and Red Bull that we we didn't go up uh, in reputation with there. Uh, we are heading towards the veteran spot, uh, showmanship. Uh, I guess sportsmanship is is what we've gone for, but no, um, no actual uh, interview, which I'm quite surprised at. Uh, it looks like we've got some classic races. You'll be able to choose whether or not to participate before the end of this weekend. So it looks like they've got rid of Jonathan, the, the stupid character that, that had owned all these uh, classic cars. I won't be doing that in the career mode this year. Those videos didn't go down terribly well last year. So I'll be doing these off camera, just enjoying myself in the game. But if you guys do want to see them, please do let me know down in the comments and that is something that we can sort out. Uh, before we go, I will tell you about some upgrades. I've, I've went for the first upgrade in all four departments. Uh, we had 2,000 resource points, I think, at the start of the weekend. Uh, also got some in, in practice. So we've went ahead and we've, and we've went for the first four upgrades and uh, hopefully they should be in place in a couple of weeks time which is is great so hopefully we'll have them 
for episode three, I think. I think the, the first two weeks are usually back-to-back. I, I can't quite remember whether this season it was. But, uh, oh yeah, you can see that there's three for China, one for Bahrain. Now, was it China that was the first weekend of the season? Uh, second, no, it was the third, as I suspected. So, that is where we're going to leave it for this episode. If you've enjoyed that, then make sure you do leave a like down below. It has been a, a longer one, this episode. I've tried a, di a different style with F1, a little bit uncomfortable with it at the moment, so I'm sure that the format will change throughout the season. But if you have enjoyed, leave a like down below. Subscribe for plenty more F1 content, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.